Okay, I'll call this meeting to order. It's close enough to 7.30. Tonight I'd like to also welcome Charles Curl to our regular meeting. Welcome, Charles. Thank you. Resolve the agenda for the June, two, uh, June 18, 2019 regular meeting of council be approved. Moved by Councillor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Resolve that the agenda. Oh, hold on. Reading the same thing twice here. Resolve that the minutes of the June 4, 2019 council meeting be received and approved. Moved by Councillor White. Second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, so we're going to skip right down to 7, 7.1. <clears throat> Resolved that the Superintendent of Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion, questions, uh, Councillor Delorier. How did the uh, first pickup or first run of the new recycling system go? Uh, good, We're, we are definitely seeing uh, a lot more commercial recycling needs than anticipated. The numbers we got from the Lions weren't, I would say, accurate. So, uh, but they also, they, you know, businesses worked hard to pool together. We're still trying to get them to do that, but we have a lot more dumpsters and carts commercial-wise than anticipated. So our co commercial costs are going to be higher than anticipated. Councilor uh, do we know how full they are? Like, are we are we do we get paid per lift? Or do we know if we're lifting half full dumpsters or full dumpsters? Yeah, or? with one run, uh, we're gonna have to go through a few times just to see, just to get some trends going. The OSS tracks that as well. If they see a quarter full dumpster every time, uh, they'll let us know. Do they have a camera on the truck that they can look in there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Councillor White and then Councilman Tony. No, that was my question, because huh? I'm not putting mine on good, probably for another couple of weeks because it's not necessary. Okay. Councilman Tony. Um, we'll talk first about that, the recycling. Yes, there are some needs with, um, with commercial recycling. I think that we need to really explore the idea of um, invoicing and charging, looking at maybe separating commercial recycling out of what we currently have and what we currently did. So I would like to, for that committee to explore that option. I think that we're going to see um, some changes or from the commercial department. And I've already heard um, from various commercial people, obviously that there's, they're still waiting for bins or haven't been contacted. And and a lot of information I think was given to the general public, but as far as commercial, there was no information given to general public that I'm aware of other than the newspaper ad, but there was no um, any any other type of information. So I'm, I've got a little bit of concerns there and if we can maybe discuss that one-on-one -on -one at some point. Yeah, and that's what I was saying is like we gave, we were given all the information from the Lions and it just wasn't complete. There's people on there that that we're sharing before that don't want to now and they want their own bin. We're trying to convince everyone to share like they were before and uh, they just don't want to. Maybe it, is it because the town's paying? They're not paying. Well, they don't think they're paying. We're all paying. But uh, uh, we are trying to get people to share and, and limit the amount of cards that go out because in the end, it's going to cost us. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's um, it was just from the few that I have talked with that there's more interest now and I'm not sure why or what the circumstances have changed but more interest and more want to be recycling everything and different materials as of now so I'm not not sure what has really changed but I know that they're interested in wanting to move forward with more recycling so I can provide more information as I get that from customer or from various businesses on that topic. 
Okay, go ahead and finish up that. Okay, the other one I have um, with mowing, I have a question with that mowing on, that is done on Highway 10, and I'm assuming that if we do it on 83 as well, but 10 from the corner all the way down, you do a great job, obviously, mowing with the, with the mower, but is there any opportunity or chance that our green team or whomever is on grass cutting to trim as well to make make it look nice and presentable as you as you come in we do such a great job in the ditches and then around the sides and at the main intersection parts where obviously the tractor can't get up the, the steep part of the ditch that we can trim it and make it somewhat pres better yeah not not in public works we don't have the manpower but uh uh we could see if the work crew could could add the, the highways ditches to their to their schedule and as most specifically, I guess the intersection on Third and Third Street North and Ten um, is a very used, very used um, intersection. And then you have nicely groomed ditches on the school division side, and then our side, and then you get to the intersection to the crosswalk, and it's grass up to your waist. So, just yeah, I, mean, that out. I think that's due to the the riprap loose police there. So we would even if. Like they won't walk on those rocks like we can't even tell them to so the, that's the grass growing in between the those big heavy rocks around the culverts so that'd be that'd be a tough one to get they can reach as far as they can just a thought yep is that it <laughs> yeah that's it okay thank you Councilor Dore. Are we looking for a timeline for pavers coming to town? Do we have that all sorted out for this year? Uh, the tender's on oh, tonight's okay. agenda. Okay. Okay. For the discussion, Councilor Friesen. I just had uh, a concerned citizen inquiring about paving their street. I can't remember what it's called. Do you know where Arnold Town is? Oh, yeah. That street. Uh, I guess that when we do our, our capital planning, which hopefully we get done in 19, that we get, it's on, it's on our prioritized list, but it, you know, we're, we just haven't stuck to our long-term plans. I can say that it's always been on the plan, always been on the list, but, uh, just due to how we budget and keep things minimal, it just doesn't get out. So they would get a letter first? Before you pay? If we were to do it, it would be a local improvement, yeah. Okay, and then they pay so much? Yeah, uh, per foot. Per foot. Yeah. And so are you uh, chemicaling that street? Calcium? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they are in town now. I believe they're in the RM so when they've done the RM. They'll do this. So it should be done with? Within. That's a really busy street because all the town trucks go down it and it's really yeah. dirty. So that was my concern and his too. So thank you. Councillor White, Jeff, okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Oh, it's carried. Mm -hmm. 7.2, 7.21 resulted the handy van report for May 2019 be received. Moved by Councillor Mentoni, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion? You have the report there. Questions? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Seven point two two. The updated two thousand nineteen financial draft. You have there. That's just basically for information. I guess if you have any questions or. Um, I guess last time we had talked about uh, uh, the rise amount and there's a meeting going to be happening two days later. Was there any developments at that meeting as far as what, what's happening? The consensus um, around the table was that we should continue to move forward with what we have. The consensus was also that once money is received that invoices would be put out to those two councils that didn't put in their fair share um, 
and then we would be if they're not willing to we would be look at dissolving rise but i think it's in our best interest to contribute our full amount this year and and um, if it were was to come to dissolve we would have the fair opportunity of having what's left in reserve so i think it's in our best interest at this time to put in the the require the the amount proposed Councilor light in relative to those reserves money, is there any clause that says who gets what percentage of that reserve money? Is it relative to the input of the entities who put it in? That's right. So what would happen in this case is that once all the budgets are approved and all the money is given to RISE, RISE would then therefore submit invoices for the remaining amount, allowing 90 days if, no, if the remainder of the funds weren't paid within those 90 days they're completely they have no access to the reserve money so what i'm thinking is that let's say the town had put in fifty thousand, and there's fifty thousand in there and the other teams ask for their 25 and we get that fully in the bank that can't happen they, they wouldn't they, get this. they'd be ineligible to okay. to get any of the money that they put in nor any money that's in the reserves okay. thank you but in the only way to access the reserves is to put in the required amount of money. Good. Councilor Morio. Uh, a couple, <clears throat> couple questions on line 8130 under recreation. Um, that one went up a few thousand dollars. Is, do we know why that one went up when we were supposed to be looking to bring it down? It went up from 70. Or seven ninety three eight nine five to seventy nine eight six five. It's only a couple thousand. There was supposed to be a reduction because of the. Mm -hmm. But looks like for the draft I got from here to what's the new one, it's gone up. So. I I have no idea. The three changes were council indemnities, cutting the fire capital in half, and. Deletion of the girls' change room and the three directives to Terry. That one I'm unaware of. There's also one line which transfers the capital that the fire truck um, transfer went from. Went up. 11,000. That was the direct direction. In roads and streets, under, all, under allocated cost, there's a jockeying in numbers between the equipment and the workshop and the yards. They both went up from so around 3212 and 3211. Yeah, I'd have to get back on those changes. I'm guessing. I'm guessing our CFO has, has made changes. I know that at these times he's going to be watching this, but like you, sh you should call me and sit and ask for these. But uh, I, I know there's a bunch of little, little tweaks in there, like $10, $20. But yeah. Ones that I'm picking out are like five hundred or thousands. Yeah, I can ask so you can on the transmission. You can take that and then have some of those answers maybe provided by email or something. Okay, yeah, that's good. Okay. Any other discussion on that? Okay, so we'll move on to 7.3, Council Reports. We will begin with Councillor White. Uh, we attended the uh, medical service meeting a while back, and I guess the bottom line is that they're the, the <coughs> requesting from the, uh, the Health Foundation, the recruiting fund, uh, monies to do an evaluation of where space could be available from, what space should be allowed. And I guess their need is obvious that there's no space right now. If they want to bring a surgeon or an anesthetist in, there's no space in the building for the period. So uh, they, they would need some space, and the, the study would theoretically show them where the space could be best built, if it is at all. Uh, the airport commission will talk about that a bunch later. There's some issues relative to the funding of that uh, the team. Uh, lots of good things happening. There's tons of good stuff. and. Uh, and there's still dialogue occurring with uh, two potential uh, 
charters who might uh, sit at a later provide service to our community, which would be wonderful. And uh, it's nice to know the doors are open with, with the airport commission representing all the municipalities. A couple of planning meetings which we worked on. Uh, the uh, the ACL meeting, well, uh, I thank the mayor for sending me there. It was uh, it's good for everybody to attend meetings where people are in need. And what a compliment to all the volunteers who deal with adults, people of all age who have needs that are greater than ours at this table. And uh, I just cannot say thank you enough to the people at ACL for their helping those needy, needy people. So I appreciate you sending me to that, sir. Uh, the municipal meeting at Giver Plains, a chance to get together with uh, our municipal equals and talk about possibilities. Uh, all sorts of people who the province are talking about shared health, for example. And so those were all good, those meetings attended. Uh, an accolade, I, I would encourage uh, the mayor, uh, your worship, to write a letter to Murray Mullen, uh, thanking him and his team for a team of volunteers. As you know, you've probably done it. Uh, it was a wonderful event. I took in a few of the events. It was awesome. So I appreciate all the work done by, uh, by our Valley community. And uh, I'm not sure this is the right time, but I'll be chastised if it's wrong. I'd like to make a motion uh, to uh, nominate Glenn McKenzie for a lifetime AMM membership. And uh, that's if our council makes that motion, pass that motion, a letter would go out and the AMM would consider it. And I'd also like to make a motion. Part of the motion is that, and any other council members on our team who have five years or more as members of this council would also get their five year pins. Or more. Or more. I think I said that. Or more. So I'm not sure what to do with the motion. I'll second it. Thank you. Well, uh, Mr. Crow, you'll write up a resolution then. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So then we'll have a chance to vote on that little later on. But thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is that everything? That's it. Thank you. Okay. Councilor Delorier. Uh, on the 11th, had a uh, recreation committee meeting. Uh, the the big fruit for, that came out of that meeting is a recommendation from our committee that we'll have a resolution on later tonight. Uh, regarding the changes to the pool hours. Uh, we also talked a bit about uh, some strategic planning that we possibly wanted to do as a committee, but we felt it best to maybe wait and see how, where where the, the overall town uh, planning goes. Um, and then uh, just some discussion regarding uh, the girls' change room and, and putting that off to, to another year. I'm sure Johnny will pick up anything that I might have missed. Uh, the following day on the 12th, went to Gilbert Plains. Um, again, the, the presentation on the shared health was, was really good, and they uh, they had a, they didn't want to get into specifics, because I think they, they knew it would just become a, what, what am I getting, what am I getting type thing, as far as what their plans are. But uh, they, had, they had their kind of, their layout of their hub model, but they didn't have towns identified, but there's a big circle over where Swan River would be on the map. And I asked them, do these actually represent the actual places these are over? She just gave me a big smile. So I don't know what that means, take from that what you will, but, but I, I'll, I'll take from that, that that might be a good sign. Um, Swan River is a district. A di it will be a district. Oh. local, it's a district. Oh, good, okay. Um, then yesterday, I had a library board meeting. Um, we talked a bit about uh, building security. Uh, there's often, you know, we've had windows broken. We've been in, well, this year we've been broken into, but previous years broken into. We had to talk about building security. We had some personnel issues to deal with, nothing, uh, nothing too uh, oops, eventful that needs to be brought up to council. So, um, and then uh, brings us to tonight. That's it for me. Okay, thank you very much. Councilor Mentoni. <clears throat> um, had a meeting with the doctors, with Mr. with Councilor White at, at a local establishment, and I was asked to sit in that meeting. Um, it was with the doctors and Lisa Lukey and that, that group. Um, there'll be some resolutions coming on the next agenda in regards to wanting to close the back alley for them for um, extra parking. So I think that the, our team is working on that as well as a right of re first refusal on the property directly north of that building um, just to have some added security with that. And we'll see resolutions coming on the next agenda, I'm told. 
And I want to shout out to the 55 plus host committee and all their hard work for an eventful few days and a good job that they did. Um, very good job and kudos to everyone who participated and all the athletes um, and guests involved as well. It had a airport commission which was very lengthy, very early and very lengthy and I got heck for having it so early in the morning but um, I didn't think seven o'clock was that, that early but I guess it is and anyway it went on for a few hours and there'll be resolutions that come forward and we can talk about that as well. I've already talked about RISE um, and the meeting that we had in that regard. Um, a recreation meeting, I apologize to Councillor Gray and to Councillor Delorier for being late on that day. I had some commitments at my work that needed attending so I can't really fill in a whole lot because I was very late to that so I do apologize. I do have Councillor Friesen intent on here that I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with it if we're booking it or not so I'm hoping I get direction from yourself and administration as well. Happy Father's Day to all you gentlemen out there out there and here this past weekend. Uh, hopefully you had time to spend with your loved ones. Also I thought I know that there's a lot of turmoil going on in our, our neighbors to the to the west, but I'm just throwing it out there that it might be um, good if we had an opportunity to make an arrangement of a day that we could possibly have a barbecue or a few drinks with them. Um, I'm not sure what the, the thought is with that, but it, I, know, I don't know if that would be, I, there's expressed interest that they might not want to, but at least we, we ask and I think that they might need our support now more than ever. So just a thought to the rest of the council. No, it's a great thought. And that's everything I have today. I, I guess if Councillor, <clears throat> when Tony and Councillor White want to organize a, a barbecue that one of my councillors of the two municipalities together, then you know what, I, I don't see a problem with that at all. It's good on you guys. So, Councillor Morial. Uh, a couple of things this period, um, it's already been touched on. I've attended the medical <coughs> services uh, committee meeting with Councillor White and Lynn Tony um, with the stuff that they brought up before. Um, also attended the uh, AMM the June district meeting in Gilbert Plains on the 12th, um, where we had some updates on the vice president's files that they lobby with the uh, province, uh, which was some good movement on there. Um, also had an update on the uh, Great West Life Insurance um, on some of the challenges that they experienced in the last year, but uh, they gave us some explanations and whatnot, along with uh, also had a presentation on shared health. I'd also like to congratulate our two new, our two uh, Parkland District uh, representative, uh, Ron Kostichian, who was re-elected and it's Dean uh, a counselor from Gilbert Gilbert, or Gilbert. Gilbert Plains or was it Grand View? Gilbert. So, uh, Gilbert. So uh, congratulations on them on winning the election for being the two uh, representatives to uh, the park, from the Parkland District to the AMM. Um, June 14th uh, attended the Swan Valley Business Consortium uh, meeting at the Super 8 um, which was uh, a good discussion on some of the uh, challenges for uh, homeless type people um, we have in the community. Uh, we also had a presentation from a private individual that has a security company out of Dauphin, which is ex-RCMP, um, who thought she came to town to share some ideas and stuff like that moving forward, but through discussions she's learned that uh, um, the community or town of Swan River um, with its relationship with the RCMP, that is, in her words, light years ahead of her community. Um, so she wants to partner up with us and pick our brain um, to deal with a lot of that stuff. Um, so I've sent her a lot of stuff. She also realized or was informed that I, was, I sit on the Provincial Municipal Advisory uh, Justice Advisory Committee, so she'll be sharing a lot of their concerns so that I can bring that up 
which will level also for them. Um, but she said uh, after the meeting we met after and she said kudos to the town and the public works and our relationship with the RCP and even just the town having those types of discussions. Um, it's, it's a difficult discussion to have, um, but there needs to be uh, those discussions to move the forward. So. And just to close, I, uh, since last week was our first uh, recycling pickup, uh, a lot of people were very impressed and have a lot of positive comments on it. And just seeing uh, those two mornings the next, uh, when the recycling was picked up, uh, seeing all the blue recycling uh, bins all lined up like picket fences down the streets first thing in the morning and then taken away um, by the evening it was good to see and uh, I want to congratulate uh, my uh, appreciation to the town and residents for transitioning from the Lions method of collecting to the new collection um, almost seamlessly in one pickup so thank you very much okay. well thank you very much Councillor Fraser I agree. It looked so good looking down the street and seeing these red boxes. Um, I also was at the, um, I call it the Derek Armstrong Consortium, as well as RCA and <coughs> Mr. Poole, and her name is Carrie Real, and she's from Dauphin, and like Council Morio said, she's ex RCMP, and uh, I think she was very impressed with the whole meeting. Um, I also uh, enjoyed the 55 plus games. I had the privilege of being chair of the opening ceremonies and it went really well too. Um, we had an RCMP member come and a piper from Dauphin and uh, they marched all the athletes in and Taylor School came over, the kids choir and they sang Old Canada and a couple of pieces. I had a couple of grade fivers meet everyone at the door and show them where they had to go. And I think they felt very comfortable in our town. They were very impressed. And they loved the park. Can't hear enough good things about the park. The concert was great. The banquet and the dance went over really well. Um, and as for the barbecue that you two are planning, I think we should include a party for um, our ex-mayor because we never have had a retirement party for him and we always said we were going to do it in the summertime so you look after that with you no you're looking after it i believe councillor white had agreed to take that on yes he did i would help of course i will help i will assist you as well and also um i've had a request to have a cemetery meeting and i we could maybe just get together for half an hour in here. I think that's a good idea. Okay. Well, I'll talk to you after then. Yeah. Um, and I ordered name bars for the pictures up there that don't have name bars. Just FYI. Good question. Okay, thanks, Councilor Friesen. Just in regards to the cemetery meeting, I think that falls under the Economic Development Committee. We should probably which I'm the chair of, we should call a meeting and that would be cemetery falls under that committee as well. So if we could schedule something for that, that'd be great. Okay. Okay. So, David. so for my report, uh, yeah, the match of uh, 55 plus games were, were done steadily well by the host committee, uh, Murray Mullen and Aaron Brown and, and several uh, several volunteers have done an absolutely an outstanding job <clears throat> showcasing our community. Uh, I, I've received several texts and emails from uh, some of the uh, committee members and, and uh, chair people that were uh, happy to see and, and working with our parks and rec staff as long as Patty and the manager. So I think that we should pass on that message to Patty and to our parks uh, staff of, of doing an outstanding job of, of showcasing our parks. Councilor Friesen had mentioned that uh, people were talking about our park and, and our community and sometimes you, you, you're you here and you don't see it but you need to step back and, and have a look at, and you really see what we really have and, and we do have a, quite a few gems here. I was actually walking into the banquet that night, uh, Wednesday night, and I met up with some people from 
uh, Pembina Valley <clears throat> or Pembina Trails. That's Morton Winkler. That I can't remember what they call it, but anyway, they were saying that they, they'd never been here before, and and they just couldn't believe what we had here. They, they just they were just astonished by what we have in this community and and the park and and what investment it had made actually how many years in the 80s when council at that time decided that they were going to convert that space that was just bull rushes and swamp to what it is today and, and we have to thank those people that had the vision the foresight to, to create something as good as what it is but uh, no it was it was good and they did an, an outstanding job and, and definitely i want to thank uh, uh rick or i'm sorry uh, murray and, and aaron for and their uh, volunteers for their work at the banquet, I had the opportunity to pass on the scepter to the next host uh, city, Selkirk. So that was kind of cool. Like I never had a chance to do that before, and I didn't. I wasn't too sure how to hold on to it. I didn't want to break. It. I didn't know how to pass it off, but it all went uh, it went all fairly fairly well. On Thursday night, I attended and brought greetings to the uh, Friendship uh, Albert uh, Chartran Friendship Center. Uh, to their General Assembly, um, which was uh, my first time actually attending that. And uh, it's, it's quite a, an organized, uh, really professional um, assembly that they have there in the organization. And uh, I couldn't believe how, how well it was done. Uh, they, they, have, they, they got their stuff together. And they were running a, a very good organization. They even had talked about you know, the, you know, the dollars and cents and stuff like that and, and what their investments are and what they're focusing on and their intentions. So anyway, I won't get into all that, but I did have their report, so if anybody wants to see this report, I would uh, welcome you to, to see that. Tomorrow, is uh, they're going to have uh, the regional school, I guess, with the Fr uh, Elder uh, Chartrand Friendship Center, they're going to have the National Indigenous People's Day celebrations in the park because Friday is, is, is graduation day, so they... We just bumped it up a couple of days, so I invite everybody to go out there uh, tomorrow and, and take advantage of seeing some good uh, sport as well as some music and, and entertainment. I uh, anticipate there will be lots of people uh, down there tomorrow. I think all the kids are getting the, the day off uh, of the school, so they'll be hanging around in the park and having fun too. Um, one other thing I wanted to bring up was that something that uh, when, um, uh, what's his name? He was here, our uh, temporary CEO, Roger. Roger was here. He had mentioned that whenever we have our first meetings of the month, often we do have a conflict, with, or not really a conflict, but a trouble that you say like Canada Day is on a Monday, the next day would be regular council, that it doesn't give administration a lot of time to get prepared for that meeting because they're just coming back to work after a long weekend. So he had suggested that maybe we uh, consider uh, in those cases uh, that we should uh, perhaps have our meeting the following day, maybe on a Wednesday. So I was uh, hoping that the council was interested in doing that, that maybe at our next meeting that we could have uh, a meeting on the, the third instead of maybe actually then looking at our procedures and changing it moving forward. So I don't know. Do you have any thoughts on that? I, I guess I'd be curious to see what the administration's thoughts are. If Tuesday's no problem, we can keep it on Tuesday. If they prefer the extra day, we can consider that. So it'd be, I guess. <clears throat> I don't mind uh, moving it to Wednesday, but I believe in the history of having council meetings, Tuesday was picked because we have our holidays usually on Monday. Um, I'm, I'm not against that. It would be helpful, but I don't know that it's imperative. So. Okay, it's completely at the you know the council's wish. And and I I was only thinking that because it was coming from Roger and it was recommended or you know in his report that he gave to us. But if if administration feels that it's not necessary, then then council unless they want to speak up and and, and, and and say that we should change that, then I think that we can just remain as status quo. Then. For example, I think a lot of us, by myself specifically. Tuesdays I book off, they're a council meeting, and some of us have Wednesday meetings as a consequence of tying up our Tuesdays, so we've made our schedules with Wednesday already booked. So I prefer status quo unless it's an issue with you two gentlemen. No, I, I think it was a nice gesture by the by the interim uh, CAO 
um, you know, very thoughtful, but I think the organization is, is run smooth enough that we can be ready for a Tuesday evening. Okay. Well, that's fair that it will remain as it is. Okay. So then uh, that's it for my report. I'll uh, pass it on now to Mr. Kroll. And again, I, I thank you to, or welcome you to our council, our first council meeting for you and, uh, and to the town of Swanard. And we look forward to working with you in uh, a long relationship. So. Thank you. Uh, I sent in a, a written report. Yeah. Uh, was there any questions on that report? This is obviously uh, not as filled in as, as, you know, as comprehensively as it will be in the future because obviously I don't have a, a history to fill in from, right? Um, so the policy proposals and unfinished items uh, will be filled in you know, in the future. The two recommendations that that are there, uh, the council's uh, free to make a motion or not make a motion. Um, out of those recommendations, that's a uh, this is a standard form that uh, many CAOs hand in for a report uh, to council, usually once a month. So it's verbal uh, at one meeting and <coughs> and a written overview of the whole month on the second meeting. So. Council and Tony. <coughs> Pardon me. I like the um, recommendation of moving the committees to a whole structure form as opposed to individual committees. Um, so I'd, I'd like to explore that idea if anybody else would, uh, and, and that's moving. Uh, You'd like to make a, a, a propose a resolution to uh, propose that change? Sure. Okay. And obviously I, I'm not sure if anybody has any other discussion on it, but I find it very helpful to um, when decisions come to the council table that we've all been through the entire process of what's been happening and not just, you know, I mean, it would save a whole lot of questions at the, at this table if everybody's involved in the whole decision making process from start to finish. I think that, um, we're so small that we probably can more heads together or better than just one or two. And then the recommendations come from somebody else and then we st have to start the whole process over again. So I would strongly move to have a resolution that we move to a whole structure system. That's all I have to say. Okay. <laughs> Any other discussion on the uh, work uh, council by? Not specifically to uh, Mr. Cole, but it's probably because, uh, Derek, you were so efficient at that which you did. And I'm sure we've all thought of it, haven't articulated the thought that you were uh, thrown into a pretty hot spot there for the last half a year, three quarters of a year, and you did it uh, exemplary, and uh, you're in your head often. You seem to keep your nose above water most of the time and uh, helped us out so much, and uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, thank you for that which you did in the interim prior to Mr. Cole's arrival. So kudos to you, sir. Thank you. Okay, is there anything further that you want to add there? Uh, all right. That covers it all. Okay. So the new business, 8.1. Uh, result of the Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission. Oh, sorry. Uh, in a written report, we need a motion to accept uh, the CAO's report. Oh, okay. So, uh, to receive. 7.3. Yeah, resolved that the June 2019 CIO's report be received. I didn't open that up. Sorry, thank you. Resolved that the June 2019 CIO, CAO's report be received. Moved by Council and Tony, second by Council Friesen. Further discussion? All in favor? Let's carry. I wasn't looking for that one there, so thank you. I, 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 I meant to tell you at the meeting and I just forgot. <laughs> Result of the Swan Valley uh, Municipal Airport Commission audited financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2018. We received moved by Councillor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? That's carried.
we're moving along over to K here. Yeah, okay. Result of the Swan Valley Veterinary and Services District Board 2019 budget be received. Moved by Councillor uh, Morio, seconded by Councillor Quintoni. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 8.4. Resolved that the signing officers for the town of Swan River be either Mayor Lance Jacobson or Deputy Mayor Johnny Lintoni and either Chief Administrative Officer Charles Kroll or Chief Financial Officer Terrence Ganita. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Or did we just no. Did you read that? No. Okay. Yeah, I'm moving too fast. Here. Right. Thank you. Result of the Swan Valley Veterinary and Services District Board 2019 contribution in the amount of $5,982.99 be approved for payment. Moved by Councillor Fries and second by Councillor Wintoni. Discussion. Mr. Poole. Uh, you'll notice on the airport budget, uh, we did estimate eighty-eight thousand dollars for the for the runway repair. But we're on the vet vet resolution right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm just oh. I just wanted to mention that we did get the asphalt tenders in, and we got some favorable pricing. So the the the, the quoted price is around fifty thousand dollars for for that. So we can we can drop these uh, prices by. Okay. Yeah, we're not there yet. <laughs> what? Sorry. Are yeah. we not on the airport? No, no. We're, no. Still, we're on the vet clinic. <clears throat> oh, geez, I'm sorry. I thought we were on 8.5. I'm sorry. All right, we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Further discussion. <laughs> All in favor? It's okay. scary. Go somewhere? Yeah. Okay, 8.5 is all the 2019 Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission budget be received. Moved by Councillor Lentoni, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Mr. Poole. Okay, so on page two under expenses, we have under uh, repairs and maintenance for the runway, $88,000 budgeted. Uh, that will, we can decrease that to $58,000. Okay, nicely done. Yeah, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Is that to approve the budget? That is. Did you want to have further discussion? No, nope, that's fine. No, that was just to receive the budget. There, there's a lot of other pieces in there. That's why I said that's fine. Yeah. Okay. That's just to receive it, yeah. not to approve it. Result of the Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission 2019 levy in the amount of $33,316 be approved for payment. Moved by Councillor Lintoni, seconded by Councillor. Councillor. Does somebody want to second it? Uh, Morio, discussion. Council Morio. Um, I wasn't part of the airport commission meeting, but uh, I see that the town's rate is changing due to a motion passed by the commission to change the funding formula, uh, which to me is, uh, from the way I read the airport commission agreement from the municipalities, that's in contrary to the existing agreement with the four municipalities. Um, someone who was at the meeting enlighten us or educate us as to how that came about and why the commission is proposing a different funding formula from what the municipal agreement from 2017 was there. Council, so the municipal, uh, the commission's agreement is based on assessment only, so 100% of the budget is calculated by assessment. It was very strongly encouraged by the RM of Swan Valley West that they would not be putting in the money unless there was a change to the way that the structure of the budget 
was presented. So various options were proposed as to looking at assessment and population, different percentages of assessment, different percentages of population. The consensus around the table <laughs> at the end of the day came up at a 50-50 split um, and it was palatable to all of the um, councillors from different, from all the municipalities. Yes, it's contrary to the, what the agreement holds, but we, that was the only, in my opinion, the only way that a budget would be some, would be able to be approved. Um, having said that, the next airport commission meeting is scheduled for September in which the funding formula will be discussed and whether or not it will continue on assessment or if we do need to go to a, a split assessment population uh, formula. I think that this year was an anomaly because it's been so far, so far in the year and that a budget needed to be passed. That's what it what it came from. I'm not saying that every council, I haven't heard if councils have approved it, but that was palatable for the RM of Swan Valley West. And I don't feel that at that table and at that meeting, we were going to achieve budget anything other than what we've presented. Council Morio. Um, respectfully to our neighbors to the west, but I don't feel that it's the airport's commission to prove you to change the funding formula that was agreed to by the municipalities. Um, if that said municipality would like to change the funding formula, I believe there's that's that's not the forum for it. There's a different forum where it asks to reconvene the signing participants uh, to we can renegotiate or rediscuss that clause in the agreement, not at an airport commission's budget meeting. Um, that's just trying to circumvent the thing and then using a threat for that, then are they saying, are they reneging on their written agreement? Because that's what they're saying is that, that if they're putting a dollar value for contrary to what the agreement is, um, basically they're saying they're reneging on that agreement. Councilor Delorier, well, I'd also be concerned that like, how do, how do they know? I mean, when we go off into our different joint organizations and we prepare a budget and we bring it back, how do they know that that wouldn't pass? I mean, they never voted on on the original, so I, I, I as far as I can tell from their minutes, that there's that, that they, if anything else wouldn't, they say that, oh, this is the only way this would have passed, is to go outside of the agreement. Then what's the purpose of the agreements? What'll happen next year? Exactly. Seventy-five twenty-five. Councilor Latoni. I agree with with going outside of uh, the the agreement, the original agreement. However, we have. I think that we need to at G five um, items to be discussed should be what the funding formula is for the valley as a whole because we have different committees that are funded different ways you have some that are solely on assessment you have some that are using population and assessment i, I don't know if we can have either we go either we go to one way or we continue that each each one has different options um, on how they're funded i would like to see a, if there's some municipalities that want to have population a certain amount of population and assessment then it should be decided and that's what all the committees should use as a whole or, or use for all of their budgeting purposes um, anyway i guess back to this one it was very very clear that anything outside of that would not be approved by Councilor well I, I guess the uh the reason why different committees have different funding formulas, you know, whatever the rationale behind that would, that, that, you know, recreation-wise, well, recreation services people primarily, um, so that that's why it's it's based on population. So different different depending on what that that organization is trying to do is why there's a difference between between how the how they're funded. So I don't know if you can have a one one brush for for all our different committees. This is how we fund them. 
because you may want to include some of that rationale in how you fund them. But I, I do feel for you uh, as chairman of the airport commission, you, you, you kind of got strong arm there. And as Councillor as Councillor Morio stated, the, the appropriate thing to do that is not the committee where it can't be changed at the committee anyways. It's an agreement between municipalities. It has to be changed at the municipal level. So I, I'm, I, I feel bad because what, what are you going to do as a committee if you have an obstinate delegation at the committee that's saying it's this this way or the highway? What do you do? But I guess here, what do we do now? Because what's going to happen next year when it's 75-25, no matter what agreement we come up with, obviously doesn't mean anything. Councillor White. I agree with everything uh, Councillor Tony said, but I'm not sure with Reeve Galloway's comments, he says, I don't believe our council will accept the plan as was prior to his change. Because first he went 75% uh, uh, population and 25% assessment. And he said, I don't know, well, maybe 50 50. So I'm not sure where his council stands on it. He spoke, uh, I think, on behalf of himself more than his council. Councilor Morio? Uh, just to rebut that, I believe that his council has an obligation to honor an existing agreement. Um, and if they don't like that agreement, there's a process to change that agreement and at the commission level is not the appropriate place to do it, um, which puts in, in my mind, is like, are, are municipalities going to start not honoring their shared services agreements if they can just don't like the number at some board level as part of that, just change and threaten me, we're not paying that, we're just paying this. Well then, what's the use of or of having shared service agreements then? If you're just gonna pick, if you don't like the number that's been agreed to the year be before or stuff like that, and then you just put what you want and sign. Like, to me, that makes that municipality um, signature on an agreement worthless. Like, there's no, like if your signature means you're bound by it, and I, I'm no lawyer, but I think when it comes to push to shove, legally, that's a legally binding document that unless it's changed by resolution or agreement by all signing parties, uh, they're bound by that funding formula, whether their council likes it or not. Councilor Wintoni. <clears throat> I agree with, with what you say, Councilor Morio, but we're seeing it with every agreement that is coming forth. Uh, prime example is RISE and the agreement that was in place. and. They basically, or they did say, here's half and that's all you're getting. They're running $170,000 um, in their proposed budget, a surplus of 170000 instead of giving the, the full amounts to anything that they want. I think a decision that we have to make is either we're going to do shared services together or we're not going to do shared services. But I think that we're seeing this happen and we're going to see it with every other agreement that, that comes forth. And either we... I, I don't know what the answer is because I, when push comes to shove that we, for RISE, that we propose a budget to them, they're telling us they're only paying half and then we're, I mean, they're opting out of that, that program altogether. The airport, I don't think, I don't know, I, I'm not sure where to, where to go with that. Um, having said that, I think that all the, going back to the airport, all the um, counselors at the table understood that this would be a, a one-time proposal, I guess, and that in September it would be looked at if that agreement needs to change or not change. Uh, the idea was that we would get some sort of budget through and that we would fix the runway. And I mean, we're in June, or at middle of, end of June. If our next meeting, we could call another meeting, but I don't think that we would have a resolved budget sooner than October. Council Morio. I understand the difficult position the commission is put in, but quite frankly, I don't think they have the legal authority to change the funding formula. It's it's made by their founding fathers of the, of the municipalities, not the commission. Um, and I'm just disturbed that I understand funding is is tight these years. Um, it's difficult to fund projects and stuff like that, but changing funding formulas at the willy-nilly 
um, to start pushing the burden on to the town versus to reduce your cost and let the town pick up the extra. Um, enough is enough. Like the town cannot be the pickup piggy bank for the rest of all these commissions or boards because um, they see us as the biggest users. Um, all respect to the rise, there's, I don't know, I'm not aware of a concrete uh, document as the airport commission has that guides them, but this is a clear signed agreement from 2017 that all participating municipalities have signed and agreed to. And if they can't understand and that that's, there's a process and at the airport commission's budget meeting is not the process to change the funding formula of that commission. And as it stands, if the, like our levy, I, I would be not voting in favor just to that person. We have a signed agreement, uh, which clearly spells out what those levies will be by the people part of that commission. And if they want to change it, they should have been talking to us long before the commission started their budget um, to ask to renegotiate and talk about the levies, not after the fact. And sorry, it may upset people, but quite frankly, I personally and as a town should be offended by being the scapegoats of having to pay the extra dollars all the time. Because every funding formula that I see coming to this table, it shifts all the money back on for the shortcomings onto the town. And then they're expecting the town of Swan Rivers ratepayers to pick up that tab because they say we're the end global bigger user, which sometimes is quite to be debatable. Okay. Sir. So just to be clear with with um, what Mr. Mario is saying, that if we go back as the commission or as the chair to that commission and, and continue with that, um, or, or excuse me one moment here. If we go back with the words uh, that that you want and they ultimately pull decide to completely pull out of the airport commission is the town of Swan River able to afford to run the airport without them is my question that I would have to be that I would need an answer to present to that table because if if we don't um, negotiate renegotiate or look at that <coughs> funding agreements as a whole is the town prepared to own the entire commission. So, so my counter is that is the is the community of Swan Valley West prepared to if I make a motion that the Swan the town of Swan River pulls a fire department from their area? Are they willing to look after fire protection on their area? Like if you want if they want to black us about blackmail us that way, it can go be on a two way street. I 100% I, I agree, but we just got to be ready for those battles because like, that's what's going to happen. I'm, I'm not disagreeing that we could look at the formula, but there's a process for that in a separate forum, and the Airport Commission Board bringing that forward is not the forum for it. The proper thing that should have been come, we need to we'd like the changes, we would like to discuss it, have meaningful dialogue and discussion on that, not back channel or back door it, and then threaten saying that my council may or may not approve this. We're, we're, we get off a little bit here, but um, we're, we're discussing the fact that if we're in support of this levy, if council's not in support of that levy, then I guess then council will have to look at what the legal requirement or obligations are as far as what the um, the agreement is. The agreement states what the levies are, and like you were stating, and from the 2017 agreement. So it's up to council to either approve this or not and, and deal with the repercussions of that. And if they want to look at legal opinion, then we'll look at that. Say on good. how this resolution will occur. Okay. So further discussion. <clears throat> okay. All in favor? Recorded vote, please. Okay. Recorded vote. All in favor? Against? It's defeated. I'd like to make a motion that the uh, 2019 Airport Commission budget be approved as per the 2017 agreement. The levy, you mean? Yeah, the levy be approved yeah, as per the, the agreement. Budget. 
I'll second that. Okay, we'll uh, let uh, Mr. Cole catch up here. Take a break for a minute. Does anybody need to take a break? Can you vote for it at one table and vote against it at the next table? Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. We just did. I appreciate your concern. I'm not. I don't know where the where do you go from here now. So he'll form. A, do we all get together as a council? And we'll, we'll. So I don't know what that does to your paving quote for the. Gives you time crunch to talk to someone else. So is that is that in there now? I just have to refresh then, or, or where's those resolutions? Oh, I, I wrote them down on paper. Okay, sorry. I'm not on top of this to the point where I can add resolutions okay. just willy nilly. Okay. Just grab the paper for me. Okay. Maybe just bring because you have you have a, a couple of resolutions there, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'll continue on with the uh, agenda and then I'll add those uh, resolutions at the end. Is that fair? Sure. Okay. So it's one, two, three. One, two, one, one, two. Resolved that the proposed schedule of hours of operation at the Aquatic Center be approved effective July 14, 2019. Moved by Councillor Delorier, second by Councillor Wintoni. Discussion. I guess Councillor Delorier. Yeah, this is the uh, proposed hours. That, uh, it's most like in option two. I think was the option in the in the public hearing we had back in April. Um, it's slightly different than that. Uh, uh, Recreation Department tweaked it slightly, but this is what our uh, our uh, committee is putting forward as the uh, changes to the uh, pool hours. And if you have any questions, you can try and answer them. I'll start, uh, Memorial. Just a quick question on, it says close Sundays in July and August. It says six to eight Sundays in 2018 had less than 20 people at the pool at any one time. So there could have been like 20 all the way through different, it's not the same 20, there could have been like 20 revolving through. So we don't have a number as how many people were there. No, but I think Sundays were the next slowest day after Monday in the summertime. The, 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 the numbers dropped considerably in the summer. Okay. Council White. Well, I just uh, I was going to ask the same question. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> Resolved that the town of Swanner accept the submitted tender bid from C and B Sterling Enterprises in the amount of seventy-eight thousand five hundred and twenty dollars for the Swan River Asheville Pavement 2019 construction work. Moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor White. Discussion? Uh, Councillor Morio and Councillor Montoni. Um, Mr. Poole, um, seeing who you're recommending and we've had issues with them in before regarding their timeliness, um, will this contract have a, an end date with penalties yeah. if they're beyond that so that we're not paving streets or trying to play asphalt in November. We do have a must finish before any amount per day penalty. Okay, perfect. Uh, Councillor uh, Lentoni. I did it. Knowing that this project or this tender is for a majority to be done at the airport, I. Are we still voting on this knowing that the airport budget has not been approved? Yeah, this just allows us to do it. I, I will not, unless the airport budget gets passed, unless I get a resolution from this council, it, it won't go through. It's just you're approving me to, to go ahead with this project. But it, it is, it's our decision whether we do or not. So, so we have no penalties if we approve this tender 
but the airport budget has been approved. It's no, it has not. Yes, it has been. It's your levy, table that was approved was not. But it passed here. We received, we approved the budget. The we, we, we defeated the levy. But the budget itself okay. has passed. Okay. okay. For the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. Okay, so our added. It will be 8.9. Be resolved that Glenn McKenzie be nominated for an AMM Life Membership Award and also that each council member with a tenure of five years or more be nominated to be recognized by the AMM. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Antoni. Discussion. Make an amendment to that. You may. Um, where it's just like if the people qualify as per AMM's rules and regulations for that. Just because I'm not quite sure, like with the lifetime, if there's conditions. Right. Or there what two different ones are? Yeah. So if the people being nominated meet those conditions, then certainly, but they need to be meet those. Okay. I did that. Okay. All in favor? It's carried. 810. Be resolved that the council committees be formed into a monthly council of whole structure. Moved by Councillor Antoni, second by Councillor White. Discussion. What does that mean? Uh, we So moving forward, if this is approved or passed, um, instead of having committees meet like say three or two or whatever of the the committees all members of council now will start to uh, will meet all together so if you are the chair of economic development then when we meet together then i'll call the meeting but then i will give the chair to the chairperson that will conduct the meeting but we'll all be part of that discussion so there's no go ahead <clears throat> if, I, if i could just add, add a point it, it all happens on one day so it's just going to be one meeting, maybe starting at 5.30 or so. And your, your meetings, your committee meetings for the month are done in one day. And you move from there, rather than having one meeting every single night of the week and things like that. It's, it's uh, well, most successful uh, cities and towns have moved to the committee of the whole structure. And it also gives the ability uh, for the the chairs of the different committees because the chair is handed off as the, at the start of each different committee. So the, the mayor opens and then he would hand it off to the first person who, was, who had their committee meeting to start. So that, that chair takes over and it gives the opportunity of the mayor to be able to get into the debate as well. Um, and then it gets handed off again to the next person and everyone around the table gets to uh, debate all the motions and all the things to to do with the uh, meetings. Oh, yeah. you'll, you'll still have the, the, the meetings with outside agencies, say the Ag Society, you'll still have those meetings. Let's say your chair of public the, the utility, instead of you, the three utility meeting, people meeting one night and then have to come back another night and explain it to us at a council meeting, we're just all there to have it. And it's all the same time. Council Antonio. I was under the impression that we would continue to use our Tuesdays for our committee of the holes, as well as, you know, if we had planning to do, we could all, we could fit them in on those Tuesdays and ensure that we had, you know, that we could cover all the topics. That's kind of what my impression was for the committees as a whole, and that, that way every Tuesday is booked for a council. If it's needed. If, if it's needed. Yeah. Yeah. And if we need other a, a different night, we may have to do that as well. But sure, Tuesdays it seems to be the common one that everybody seems to be uh, planning on booking off anyway. So, is that what your thoughts were too? Yeah, no, that's absolutely it. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't didn't mention that uh, we we did expect that it would be on the the Tuesday. So so if the if the Tuesday committee of the whole goes long, whatever was covered in that, you can adjourn and move to the next. Uh, you know right after the next council meeting, finish whatever committees weren't finished on that previous Tuesday, so that the councillors are constantly being updated on that one meeting about everything that's going on. And, and it's two things. Councillors get fatigued, 
uh, from constantly being at meetings. And this really does uh, provide some relief and provide some sanity to the, the myriad of, of different meetings that counselors have to go to. Um, unfortunately, there's no such thing as a committee of the whole on standing committees with, uh, with uh, private citizens who have to be on it, but, but the committee of the whole structure works very well when it's uh, um, council committees where it's all council members. Thank you. That was my question. Like, I'm on a couple of committees where it's not none of you guys, it's other people. So, those are still okay. Those are still, that's right. Okay. That's, yeah, that's, this is going to be less meetings. Mm -hmm. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Result? Okay. Having said that, the next day would be the 25th, and I would. Uh, move to have the Committee of Economic Development be first on the agenda on the 25th of June. Maybe. <laughs> 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 we'll, we'll, we'll schedule that in there, I think. <clears throat> Sneak it right in there, right? Okay. Um, <laughs> Resolved that the Swan Valley Municipal Airport Commission 2019 levy uh, be based on the 2017 agreement on the airport uh, commission. Is that that? By the municipalities. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Moved by Councillor Gloria. Second by Councillor Gloria. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Abstained. Abstained. Carried. 10.1. Be it resolved that the accounts as it follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 24488 to number 24522 for a total of $81,482.35. Payroll accounts check number 4473 to number 4479 for a total of 108,569 dollars or $569.58. Moved by Councillor Morial, seconded by Councillor Wentoni. Discussion. Councillor Morio. Um, we check number 24496, uh, Derek. Um, what's Unit 204 and what are can, the conveyor change in sprockets? Uh, to Joe Johnson equipment. I would have to. I would, you've got the invoice with you? No, it says the comment. Oh, you're on the explanation, sir. Yeah, it says Unit 204 conveyor change in sprockets. <clears throat> I'm just trying to use my memory. Oh, that's the sweeper. The conveyor and the sweeper. Uh, the sprockets do go. So that's what that's what broke on it. Yeah. Down. Okay. Good. I'm good. That's it. Further discussion. All in favor? It's carried. I guess the last thing is: Is there anything that anybody wants to bring up in camera? Because we don't have nothing out here, so. All right, if there's none. The result of this regular meeting, the council will be adjourned. Moved by Councillor Antonio, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion, all in favor? It's carried. We're now adjourned. Thank you. Uh, Rick Fortune.